Hello and welcome to this tutorial on mastering your aggregate functions part 1. In this tutorial we are going to go through uh, these aggregate functions such as count, distinct, sum, min, max, average, variance and standard deviation. So for this demonstration we have a table here called dpo.products which has these columns product ID, product name, vendor, unit price and stock price so if you see the table contains seven records which correspond to seven different products the vendors their unit prices and the stock which is there um, currently available okay so for references of cross-checking how the data um, comes out when we query differently I have taken down the same result set here on the screen so we'll go through the aggregate functions one by one so the first one is the count so the way you write it is you say select count one from table so you can say count one you can say count star or you can give a specific column name um, inside this count function so these are functions basically you can say aggregate there are aggregate functions um, just ignore these red lines which indicates that this editor is not recognizing this uh, table or these columns sometimes this uh, manual studio behaves quite uh, weirdly so uh, if I execute this let's execute first so it returns a sex so this is basically the count of the records in this table pardon I have just uh, misspelled this numbers here okay one two three five six okay so there are six records so count one returns from this table returns six if you say count star that corresponds to count all the columns uh, from this table but it's going to return you the number of rows so this also returns 6 now if you say count product name this also return this is also going to return you 6 because these products if you see uh, there are 7 records one for each product okay so unless you do something inside this one star or a particular column name is going to give you the number of records in the same table if you want the fastest performance use count one from the table the second aggregate function uh, it's not an exactly an aggregate function but it internally works that way is distinct suppose in this table you want to know how many distinct vendors are there or how many vendors from uh, from how many vendors you keep the products in your catalog so you can do that by querying like select distinct in the bracket give the name of the column on which you want to find the um, distinct values and that is going to give you the result so this is it says that there are three distinct vendors in the database and it gives us the values in this vendor column so if you can see this result there is apple there is wonders flappico again wonders apple so apple wonders and flappico these are the three distinct vendors okay if you put product name here it is going to return the distinct product names now because in our case each product name is different it will give us all the six because okay, so it, it makes sense wherein you have multiple values you can um, call this distinct function and uh, pass on the column name on which you want to find distinct values now another interesting <coughs> combination is uh, count and distinct okay so basically these functions take expressions although you are passing a column name here there can be an expression here not with this thing but with uh, this count so when you say count in bracket when we are passing uh, this um, column name or we are saying count one instead of that we can give an expression here okay so we say count distinct of vendor from this table so this is going to first evaluate this distinct vendor stuff which is going to return us three distinct values of vendors we know from this earlier query execution right it, it is going to return three unique vendors and then this count is going to operate on this result set and give us a count of three 
So let's try running this. Oops, it gives us three. So if you want to find out, you know, how many distinct values are there, um, you're not interested in actual values, but you just want count. So you can just wrap this distinct around um, around the distinct with count, and you are going to get this uh, count. It, it's easy to um, um, not see the significance here because the number of records are very less and the complexity is also very simple but when you have millions of records and uh, hundreds of columns it is apparently very useful combination the next aggregate function we see is sum now okay, it's again the straightforward um, obviously this is going to operate on columns which have numeric values which can be summed up so the way you write it is sum in bracket you pass on this column name which contains uh, numerical values which can be summed up so here we say we want to know how many products um, units are there in our stock it doesn't matter what type of product it is we just want to know the total count so we say sum of stock from products so from here you can see we have 120 130 145 155 and 205 I guess if I run this so 205 is what we get um, in return okay so it's going to sum up all the values from uh, that particular column in each of these rows and gives us the sum now again sum also takes expression so we cannot uh, we can pass expression instead of just a column so the expression is going to be anything which can be I mean the result is an integer or a basically a measurable result which is which can be summed up okay so we have um, unit price and stock in our table if you see right so we know that iPhone price is 499 uh, and the stock is 100 so probably we can uh, find out what's the value of all the stock we have in our, um, in our star storage right so 499 into 100 that's the total value of iPhones we have then 295 into 20 is total value of all the iWatches we have and we want some of all this so we know how much um, sellable products you have in your stock okay so you can in then in we can pass this unit price into stock and then sum it up so this is going to first uh, multiply these uh, column values in each of these record and then pass it to the sum function so it will give us the all total sum of every pieces and then summed up together so if you run this this is something around yeah 76,000 right so it is not um, mandatory to pass only the column names I can just pass anything like if I just want to see if I double the stock how much the stock is going to be okay so we just pass in 2 because it was 205 we have doubled it so it's 410 so it's any expression which can be summed up basically and there's no limit what you can put here you can uh, I mean add one more column if it makes sense in your particular scenario okay then we have these uh, min and max function so it behaves as what you would expect if you pass on a column name to min a unit price it is it going to return us the minimum unit price available in our products so it's 5.99 I guess that corresponds to this mouse pad from Flappy Crow. Yeah, this is 5.99. Um, yeah, so wherever it makes sense, you can pass on that column name and it gives you this uh, value. Again, you can pass expressions. So we want to find out what is the minimum valuation product we have with us, including uh, the count of stock. So 79.9 again that will probably be the same um, mouse pad so it's 15 into 5.99 oh no it is this one actually 7.99 into 10 that is 79.9 so this is the lowest valuation of this product and stock we have similarly you can find out the maximum as we did with minimum you can find out maximum unit price like this select max pass the column name so 499 is the maximum uh, the, or the costliest product we have in our products catalog and uh, 
again it also takes expression so if we say max of unit price into stock this is going to give us the valuation of the um, most valuable you know most valuable uh, stock we have with us maybe the price of uh, the product individually is not the highest one but the valuation of the stock will be the highest one okay um, next in the line is the average function this again operates similar to min max just it takes the average so if you pass on average and the column name it is going to take an average of those unit prices and give us two or three uh, I'm not going to calculate that but you can do it yourself you can take average price of these and this is going to come to 203.6 something okay um, and also the same way as uh, min max you can pass expression into average so this is going to give us average stocks valuation among all your products so this is also going to return you the exact same value fine so this is these are the most commonly used aggregate functions you can call yourself very good at aggregate functions if you know all of these and you can use them well uh, more important thing is um, apply them rightly in your situation which columns to select what data you want um, okay and uh, so a couple of more are these variance and standard deviation so these are statistical functions some of you which are which uh, do the job of analyst or into some call center uh, some sort of statistics um, profiles uh, they find it useful so this uh, from querying perspective it's the same way you can um, pass the column name and uh, this variance function VAR is going to look through all the values in that column and calculate the variance and again it takes an expression not just a column name and it's going to give you the variance based on this expression similarly standard deviation you can pass a column name it is going to look up in all the values in that column and calculate standard deviation similarly you can pass on this expression as well of units price into stock and it is going to give you standard deviation of valuation of each of the products fine so that's all for this video uh, there is more to this uh, aggregate functions uh, you can call it advanced where you can actually group by different uh, categories and then apply these aggregate functions which uh, we'll cover in a later video because of the time constraints and uh, please let me know if this was helpful if you have any questions or there's something else you want to see thank you very much for watching